If you ever walk into a room and forget why you're there, then walk out, remember, walk back in and forget again. Congratulations, you're human. But what if that forgetfulness wasn't just a momentary glitch? What if it was the beginning of something deeper, scarier and harder to name? Today, we're asking, can artificial intelligence, yes, the same thing that autocorrects, I'm fine to, I'm flaming, actually cure dementia? Let's find out. And no, I won't be doing this alone. I've got my AI assistant here. She's smart, fast and doesn't judge me for eating cereal at 11pm. Say hi to Sandra. Hey Kunal, I'm online and ready. Brains, bites and bright ideas. Now, the big question. The one that headlines articles, sparks debates and quietly lives in the minds of millions. Can AI cure dementia? Let's not beat around the bush. No, it can't. Not today. Not yet. And maybe not ever in the way we imagine a cure to be like a pill, a switch, or a magic reboot button for the brain. But here's the twist. What AI can do is borderline miraculous. It's not the cure. It's the compass. It's the flashlight in a very confusing, very dark hallway. And no, a flashlight doesn't cure darkness. But it helps you find the light switch. It helps you avoid bumping into furniture. It helps you say, ah, okay, I see what's ahead. I can prepare. AI isn't the hero that storms in with a cape and fixes everything. It's the quiet genius in the corner, analyzing patterns, spotting clues and whispering, hey, something's changing, let's act now. And that kind of help, that kind of early warning, personalized support and scientific exploration, it might not be a cure, but it's a lifeline. And in the world of dementia, lifelines matter. Sandra, give us the real definition. Sure, Kunal. Dementia isn't just one disease. It's a syndrome. That means it's a collection of symptoms that show up when brain cells are damaged. And we're not talking about the occasional forgetfulness we all experience. We're talking about changes that affect memory, thinking, judgment, language, and even personality. Symptoms can show up in many different ways. Some people struggle to find the right word in the middle of a sentence. Others lose track of time or mix up dates. And some make choices that seem out of character. You might notice someone repeating a question getting confused during a conversation, or having trouble following a simple set of instructions. These are signs that the brain's usual shortcuts and routines are starting to break down. Those changes don't stay locked in the head. They affect daily life. Tasks that used to be automatic, like paying bills, cooking a familiar meal, or using a phone, can become frustrating and slow. People often pull back from social events because they're embarrassed or exhausted, and family members step in to help with things that used to be shared. The practical load grows, and with it comes emotional strain for everyone involved. There is also a quiet emotional toll. For the person experiencing dementia, small losses, forgetting a name, losing a train of thought, missing an appointment, pile up and can feel disorienting or frightening. For families, it can feel like watching someone change in pieces, with moments of clarity mixed with confusion. That's why noticing early signs matters. Early recognition gives families time to plan, get support, and make choices that protect safety and dignity. For many families, the first signs are easy to dismiss. A misplaced wallet, a forgotten appointment, or a repeated story can feel like normal aging quirk. But when these moments begin to stack up, they paint a bigger picture. What seems like small slips can be the early signals of something deeper happening in the brain. That's why awareness matters. Recognizing these changes early doesn't stop dementia, but it does open doors to support, treatment options, and planning that can make a huge difference. It gives families a chance to prepare, to adjust routines, and to protect independence for as long as possible. Early recognition is less about fear and more about giving people the dignity of time and choice. It can start subtly, misplacing things, forgetting names, repeating questions. But over time, it can grow into something much harder. Struggling to follow conversations, getting lost in familiar places, or forgetting the faces of loved ones. So it's not just forgetting your Netflix password. It's forgetting what Netflix is and why you were trying to log in and who the person next to you is. Sandra, why can't AI cure dementia? AI cannot regenerate neurons or reverse brain damage. Once brain cells are lost, no machine can bring them back. Dementia is a biological condition rooted in changes to the brain's structure and chemistry. That kind of repair, growing new neurons or undoing damage is still beyond the reach of technology. AI is not a biological intervention, and it's important to set that expectation clearly. What AI can do is help us see dementia earlier. 
By analyzing brain scans, speech patterns, and even subtle changes in daily behavior, AI can pick up on warning signs long before they become obvious. Early detection matters because it gives families time to prepare, doctors time to act, and patients more opportunities to slow the progression of symptoms. It's like spotting smoke before the fire spreads. Artificial intelligence also plays a role in personalizing treatment. Dementia doesn't look the same for everyone, and neither should the care. By studying medical history, genetics, and lifestyle data, AI can suggest which therapies or medications might work best for a specific person. It's not inventing new drugs, but it's helping doctors make smarter, more tailored decisions with the tools they already have. Beyond medicine, AI can support patients in everyday life. It can remind someone to take their medication, guide them through tasks step by step, or even monitor changes in mood and behavior. For caregivers, AI becomes an extra set of eyes and ears, alerting them when something seems off, helping manage routines, and reducing the stress of constant vigilance. It doesn't replace human care, but it strengthens it. And perhaps most importantly, AI offers hope in a space where cures don't yet exist. It can't stop dementia, but it can make the journey less overwhelming. By detecting earlier, tailoring treatments, and supporting families, AI turns a fight that often feels powerless into one where small wins are possible. In the world of dementia, those small wins, more time, more clarity, more support, can mean everything. So AI is the Sherlock Holmes of brain health. It can spot the clues, predict the crime, and help you prepare. But it's not the surgeon, it's the strategist. The question is, can it detect dementia before the memory loss, before the confusion, before the heartbreak? And if so, how does it do that? AI models are trained to look at data in ways humans simply can't. They can scan through thousands of MRI and PET images, picking up on tiny shifts in brain structure that might escape even the most experienced doctor's eye. Beyond images, they can analyze speech patterns, like pauses, word choice, or rhythm, and even handwriting, where subtle changes in spacing or pressure can reveal early cognitive decline. These systems are designed to catch micro-changes, the smallest signs that brain function is starting to slip. A pause that's just a little too long, a word that's slightly misplaced, or a scan that shows a faint thinning in a region of the brain. All of these can be clues. AI doesn't just notice one detail, it connects thousands of them, building a picture of what's happening beneath the surface. The results are striking. Some AI models can predict progression to Alzheimer's with more than 80% accuracy, years before a clinical diagnosis would normally be made. That means families and doctors could have a head start, time to prepare, to adjust treatments, and to plan care before the disease fully takes hold. It's not a cure, but it's a powerful way of changing the timeline, shifting the fight against dementia from reaction to anticipation. So, it's kind of like a psychic brain doctor. But instead of waving a crystal ball, it stares at MRI scans and crunches numbers. And the best part? It doesn't charge you $200 just to say congrats, you're a Pisces. Sandra. Explain how AI is helping scientists to create new ways of treatment for dementia. Artificial intelligence is revolutionizing dementia research and treatment by enabling scientists to analyze vast amounts of complex data and identify previously undetectable patterns across various applications. Artificial intelligence facilitates early diagnosis by utilizing machine learning to analyze brain scans, detecting subtle structural or functional changes often missed by human eyes, which is key for timely intervention. It drives precision medicine by matching treatments to individual patients based on their unique genetic and environmental profiles, thereby maximizing treatment efficacy. Furthermore, artificial intelligence significantly accelerates drug discovery by identifying promising drug targets and predicting compound effectiveness, leading to the rapid development of novel therapeutic candidate. Beyond research, artificial intelligence enhances monitoring and care through powered devices that track patients in real time for safety and automate tasks like medication reminders while also developing advanced cognitive training programs to help individuals maintain their mental abilities and improve their quality of life. Overall, artificial intelligence's capability to process and interpret data quickly and accurately is making a profound and growing impact on the future of dementia management and treatment. So, artificial intelligence is not replacing human care. It's enhancing it. But what happens when AI misreads a symptom? What if it's trained mostly on data from one demographic? And what occurs when it starts making decisions that feel impersonal? That is a great question. What happens when artificial intelligence misreads a symptom? The consequences can be serious.
because unlike a minor technical glitch, a misdiagnosis can directly affect a person's health and well-being. If an AI system interprets data incorrectly, it might suggest the wrong treatment or overlook a critical condition. This highlights the importance of keeping human oversight in the loop, ensuring that medical professionals validate and contextualize AI outputs before they are acted upon. What if it's trained mostly on data from one demographic? In that case, the AI risks becoming biased, unable to recognize or accurately respond to symptoms in populations outside its training set. For example, medical images of skin conditions often skew toward lighter skin tones, which means the system may fail to detect issues on darker skin. This isn't just a technical limitation, it's a structural problem that can reinforce inequality in healthcare. Building diverse representative data assets is essential to prevent these blind spots. So we need to keep AI on a leash, a smart, ethical, well-fed leash that ensures technology serves humanity rather than the other way around. This means building systems with transparency, fairness, and accountability baked into their design. AI should be trained on diverse datasets, monitored for bias, and constantly evaluated against ethical standards. The leash isn't about restricting innovation. It's about guiding it responsibly, making sure that progress doesn't come at the cost of trust, safety, or compassion. Because the goal isn't to replace doctors, it's to empower them. AI can process vast amounts of data, spot subtle patterns, and provide insights that might otherwise be missed, but it cannot replicate the empathy, judgment, and human connection that patients need. By acting as a powerful assistant rather than a substitute, AI can free doctors from repetitive tasks, give them sharper tools for diagnosis, and allow them to focus more on the human side of care. In this way, technology becomes a partner in healing, not a competitor. AI can't cure dementia, not today, and maybe not ever. But what it can do is reshape the way we understand the condition, track its progression, and develop strategies to fight it. From analyzing brain scans to detecting subtle changes in speech or behavior, AI is helping researchers uncover patterns that humans might miss. It's not a miracle fix, but it's a powerful tool that points us toward better treatments, improved care, and deeper insights into how dementia affects lives. In that sense, AI isn't the cure, it's the compass, guiding us toward possibilities we couldn't see before. And sometimes, a compass is enough. It helps families navigate the uncertainty, gives doctors sharper tools, and empowers patients to live with more dignity and support. That's why the conversation around AI in healthcare isn't about replacing human compassion, it's about amplifying it. If this video made you think, laugh, or even tear up a little, hit subscribe. And if you're curious whether AI can tackle heartbreak, procrastination, or even your obsession with conspiracy documentaries, stick around. There's more coming and we're just getting started.